Hello, it's Tom from Texas and it's time for another floppy deep dive and today we are going to be diving into BBS's. Uh, in particular, my BBS. I'm doing a deep dive into the Vision BBS. It's the program that I used when I ran my BBS program back in the late 80s, early 90s. and. Uh, I just thought it was really cool to do a deep dive. A lot of people haven't seen BBSs in probably 30 years. Um, I do. I am very aware that they're still around and that you can call into them and some people still do have them. But a lot of people still haven't seen a BBS and before the internet, this is what we did. Uh, we could call in. I had a modem. In fact, a modem just like this, this is not my original modem, but this 1670 1200 baud modem is what I was running my BBS on when I was running it back in, it was around 88 to 90, maybe 88 to 91. Um, I had a BBS that I would run in the in, at night or during the day, and then when I got my own phone line, I would leave it up. Uh, the hard thing about BBSs is when your computer is running the BBS, you cannot do anything else on your Commodore computer. So I had to get me another Commodore so I could actually use the Commodore while my BBS was running. Hence why when I dug in my attic, I found two Commodore computers up there and just totally forgot the reason why I had two. Well, it kind of all came back now. So anyway, I was going to show you the Vision BBS. It's kind of like a time capsule going back in time uh, and look at the features that we had back then, what we did when we called in. And I just found it interesting and I hope you find it interesting too. So let's get started. So if you're not familiar with modems, um, I had three when I was using the Commodore 64. And I started off with a 300 baud modem and then I changed to this 1200 baud modem. And how this worked is we just connected it directly into our phone lines. So everything was done over the phones. If someone would pick up your phone while you were using it, it would disconnect and you'd lose your, the call. On, and if you were downloading something, you'd have to start all over again. So getting your own phone line was huge. Uh, I finally did get my own phone line uh, late when I was already I was working, so I, I paid for my own stuff. So by that time, I could afford to pay for my own phone line. Start up the board the board in the middle of the night, and people would be calling all through the night, all through the day, and you know posting on the messages and downloading and uploading files, and doing all that over the modems. That's how eventually I gathered all of these. And this is a lot of hours put into downloading games and programs over the modem. And that was a lot of hours invested. And that's probably one of the huge reasons for me, besides I just enjoyed it, but I never got rid of it because I put so much time into it I never had the heart to get rid of any of my Commodore stuff, and thank God I didn't. I'm glad that I kept all of it, but that was part of it. When you work so hard and put on all that time, it was just hard just to give it away to somebody. So I was happy that I still have it. So let's go ahead and check out the Vision BBS system that I was running, and you can see the different features that I had. So the Vision BBS on the booter on the first screen, you can go into the BBS mode, your system mode to set stuff up or read the documents on how to do it. So basically I'm gonna load this up and just kind of give you an overview of the Vision BBS. And while doing it, you could see exactly, it's in the same state that it was in back when I stopped using this. And when I was running this BBS, you kind of get a little bit of a time capsule. So when you start this up, you got to put in your time and everything and your date. It is not Y2K compliant. It would not let me put 2021 in there. Uh, it made me actually have to put go back a time, and so I just put a time in the 80s. So not really forward thinking there, obviously, but 
you know, who there's a lot of people that weren't forward thinking when it came to the Y2K. But anyway, this just gets it started, gets it rolling so it knows what it's doing, pulls up to Vision BBS, and this is the screen it would sit on until someone would call up. So when they would call up, you could, I could, as the SISOP, could see who was the last one to call when they logged on. Um, what was the time they and everything so it kind of just gave you an overview of what was going on with your BBS system but I'm going to go into the local mode and just show you what it's like so here I am logging in and I had this really cool title screen at least I thought it was cool that ASCII art was really neat back in those days um, I did not create it I was not that creative but I had some guy apparently named Roscoe Dog as you can see on here who did the art so I just used what he created to uh, have my intro when they log in and so on the handle this is where they would go in they would type their username or if they were new they would type new or if you knew your number I was the size up so I knew I was number one it took me a little bit to figure out what my password was and to, re <laughs> to remember how to get it but uh, Obviously, it was, it was actually pretty easy to get it once I remembered where to look. It was just trying to remember everything because it's just been so long since I even touched this. So they would log in and, and you could limit how many calls they call in and everything. Uh, so, so when I want to log in, this would be the first thing they would see. Uh, apparently, I've been running the board since April of 1988. And uh, you always had your co op along with me with SISOP and the remote was Buddy. Again, I don't know, I'm not sure who that was. I still don't know who the co op is. And it looks like you could put a little bit messages and so forth to tell the patient, uh, or patient, you could tell the person uh, that basically what was going on for that week. It looks like I was down a lot, must have been storms and stuff. And I was reading on this, I see that I'm getting ready to start a new BBS because I'm switching from 1200 baud to 2400. So I'm just announcing to all my uh, members that 2400 baud was coming and to be excited. And also while I was looking through this, I noticed that uh, if you were 300 baud, you were no longer going to be allowed to call because now 300 baud users were shunned and they were too slow if they could not do 12 or 2400 so it took too long for you to upload and download files so anyway this is the main menu here and we're just gonna I'm gonna touch on each one of these briefly I know these are just text screens but this is the message basis here that people would go in here and this is kind of like your Facebook groups uh, had six different boards or bases that they could go into and actually uh, go in there and then post messages so you would go in there you would post messages and then you would uh, basically you know you could put respond to messages and so every time someone called you would read whatever new messages popped up at the time since the last time you called like here there was three new messages since the last time I called so you could go in there and you could just see the new messages that you read or that were posted or you could go back and see all the messages so it was kind of cool uh, doing this deep dive into the message bases because now I could dive in and actually see some of these posts and some of the the, the wording of how people are talking and reading these posts you can obviously tell these are just a bunch of kids uh, at least I could tell a bunch of kids just spending time on a computer up late at night calling posting goofy stuff, posting all sorts of stuff. Here's one basically telling people that they're going to get nuked because they're 300 baud and uh, they're no longer going to be able to come and, and, and use my system once I switch over to the new one. And I'm not going to make you all read all these messages. I just thought it was interesting, kind of a cool time capsule to see them. In fact, I, I could speed this up or just block it out all together. But just another person, you know, who is a 300 baud, but, you know, it was just time. You want to keep moving and getting faster and faster, just like you do, you know, on these ages where you, your internet, you want to keep getting faster. That was the same with the modem. So different people just posting different stuff, saying different things. 
uh, kind of sign of the times. Uh, I was reading through some of these posts. Some were talking about the Super Bowl that was going on uh, at the time. It was Denver and the 49ers uh, that were in that Super Bowl that year. So it was kind of cool to see them talking about that. People talking about Guns N' Roses like they were brand new. Uh, when were the new albums coming out? When was, well, they said the new tape coming out, but when's the new albums coming out? And, and you know, people would advertise their boards. They would advertise uh, their phone number to try to get different people to call on different things. Uh, here, here's an example right here while I was mentioning that where people just posting their numbers. Uh, back then, obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but you didn't have to put in the area code. You just typed in the seven-digit number to dial places. You didn't have to put the 817, what was my area code at the time, uh, to be able to call the different places. And and you didn't have to do, you know, you know everything was just long distance was long distance. If I tried to call... You know, I was in the Fort Worth area here in Texas. If I wanted to call the Dallas right next to us, it would be long distance. And it would, and, and, and that was always the 214 area code. And obviously, I couldn't afford to call long distance and so forth. And that's where all the different stuff where people were freaking, it was called, where you could do manipulate different things to be able to call long distance. I was never brave enough to do that, so I didn't do it. Here you could see people also played D&D uh, &D online. They had boards just for D&D &D where you called in and made your moves and so forth. So a lot of different things going on. A lot of uh, just people calling in, posting whatever they wanted to post. This was just one part of calling into BBSs. But it's very, you know, pre-Facebook of, you know, posting your messages, posting the notes. And here's another one showing you the Nova BBS. But posting the different stuff for trying to get people to call your your BBS, trying to get, again, it's almost like YouTube subscribing, right? Trying to get people to watch the video, trying to get people to call your BBS, trying to get people to upload, trying to get people to download and, and, and make them active on your system. And this is what you could do. And it was actually pretty cool at the time because the BBSs were all you had. There was no internet. So our, the internet was coming very shortly, but there was no internet at that time. And this was this is how you communicate it. And, and you had just like the online friends you have today, you had online friends there, but everyone was pretty much local. And uh, so it was different uh, basically because you were in your own little bubble and it was cool to see how many people would call and the people that interact. And then you could see on here, just me running from 88, there was over... 2,000 different uh, messages that people posted and so forth. So, so it was it was active. It was in like I said, it took time. So when people were downloading and uploading to your bulletin board system, it would take time and lock up your your computer quite a bit. And so lock it up in that it was just because it took so long to download and upload stuff. Stuff that takes seconds today just was took hours so so if it was something long you just wanted to make sure and obviously if someone's uploading something to you you didn't want something that you already had so so you show them different things and we'll go over that but this is just an example of the message system here so you can also see on here in the message there were different as you can see different message bases just to do, do, do different things so uh this was just some more of the different message bases and just different topics to encourage people to post about. This one's actually pretty cool ASCII art that someone created on there, I thought. Uh, just wanted to include that on there. Now here was an advertisement for someone's uh, BBS. I'm sure they worked hard on this ASCII art. Uh, here's me just posting and wanting more Sid songs from I was big into the SIDS back in those time, creating my own and always wanting more. So here's the main menu again. You can see that you can toggle from ASCII to graphics. We just got out of the message basis. You could chat with the SISOP. Here's the C feature. It would basically turn everything gray around there. 
and that could let you know if someone wanted to talk to you. If you were around, you could talk to them back and forth and chat. D was to display the time and date, you know, whoopee. Uh, e is if you had electronic mail. You could leave feedback, so if you wanted to tell the SISOP something about this, the, the board, you could actually put in a note that would go directly to the SISOP. and save it so when the SISOP comes back in he could see a message that was left from one of the members. Now the G files, this was a big section because this had to tie into the uploads and downloads and part of the reason why I ran a BBS is because I collected floppies and I wanted more and more stuff and you could see I had a list of all my different wares, the words back in the day, <laughs> that cracks me up, but the wares back in the day, my games, list of software that I had. So the expectations was for that member to go in there and look through all these games names and and not upload something that I already have, right? So if you're gonna upload me Pac-Man, you better go look on there and make sure that Pac-Man wasn't already on my list or Knight Rider or whatever the games that are on here. So so that was the whole point of that. And since you couldn't always update your wares, or at least I didn't, you also had different other sections that you could put. Like So if you wanted something specifically at this time, these were the games that I wanted. I don't know if I ever got these games. But anyway, these were the games that I wanted at the time for people to upload. So that was my suggested please upload to me list. And then I also had, you know, what I just received, I before E except after C, Tom. But anyway, so these were ones I just received, so I could put a quick list on there, so p try to keep people from uploading the same thing that I already had because I've already downloaded. So, so th that was the whole point of this G file section, and and you could have other little things. So, so you had ways for people to, uh, or how to get the credits, so to download. So if people came in and you encouraged them to be active, they would earn credits so they could actually download. So if you won user of the week, you got 200 credits, which I'm sure the credits tied to blocks. Um, if, if you posted more than 100 posts, you got 1,000 credits. So it was just a way to encourage people to be active on your BBS so they will actually, you know, be stuff going on so when people dialed in there will always be new stuff and that was the whole thought behind it uh, I see on there you can have a jerks list or you could have people who are really good the elite posters so I'm sure it kept record of how many people uh, how many posts they did and you could list their names so it was just different contests like that again just to try to keep the board active uh, I know some BBSs actually had games you could play online. There were different, just different stuff that you could do. Um, and then you could also post, you know, people's BBS numbers. So you, you would hope by sharing their BBS on your, on your system or your BBS, they would share on theirs. So you would put people's different uh, phone numbers out there to, for people to call. Obviously, these are old folks back in the, you know, from the 90s, so don't call these numbers. They are not no longer tied to BBSs, as far as I'm aware. Um, so, so that was called the G files, and you could basically keep all your stuff in there. Uh, and, and, and that was quite active. And I, I'm glad I, had, I still have those lists of wares, because then I can check and see what I had. So it was good that I made those lists. Um, help for new users was something that was on there. The the rules and etc. Just like the the groups on Facebook, you have to have your rules where people could do. So uh, you know, telling them how they're supposed to behave and so forth. I don't know if anyone ever read that, but uh, that was something that you had on there. Let me sum this up. Do something I don't like, I will delete you. Yes, I was I was uh, very. Uh, friendly <laughs> but anyway just just ridiculous kids stuff but it does remind me a lot of the ridiculous rules and groups too so I'm not you know it's been going on forever folks um, this here you could just go on there and you can get a list to see who all is it was a part so these are all the different usernames 
or some of the usernames. I'll report this here in a minute. But of people that signed up and were members calling in to uh, the Temple of Syrinx. And so you always, like I said, want to increase and get as many users as possible. And as you can tell, there's there's quite a few. And this isn't even the full list. I'm just giving you an overview of, of what there was. But uh, there, there, there was quite a few people that would call. And when, it, when someone's online, you can't just jump on too. So realize this was the back in the day of busy tones. So if someone was on your phone and calling and downloading and uploading, you know, no one else could do it. So that's why you didn't want the 300 botters tying it up and making everything slow. Uh, you, I could go in here and you could see your status of different things, but but that was the whole purpose of it. So that's why you wanted to keep getting faster and faster so people would get on and get off and keep more people coming through and accessing your BBS. This here was the popular part. It's not really set up right here for me to show you, but this is where the uploads and downloads would take place. So, so I would have a drive and back when I was running my uh, BBS. I had a 1581 at that time. So I would load up my 1581 full of things for them to download. And then on my upload one, I would leave it pretty much blank. Um, so they had plenty 664 blocks to be able to upload stuff to me to be able to download from the download folder um, So again, I'm just trying to remind people because you just you'd be shocked they get credits when they upload so they'll upload you something you know that was crap <laughs> and then unfortunately you know download all this stuff and then you would you would have something you already had or something that just wasn't very good so this is just i'm just going through these features just seeing what it does but none of this is really set up it's all closed and so forth so we'll get past this and i'll show you some more here all right so we'll quit out of there and we'll get back in here and there's oh this is almost pretty much everything that was the uploads and downloads but the H, that was the help of the new user. So this is just basically when you logged on the first time, you didn't have access to do anything. Uh, you were basically signing up. And then me as the slice up would have to go in there and grant you and validate your membership and allow you to stay. So, so that's pretty much everything that you could do on this BBS. Um, it, it's a lot similar a lot of things were you know before but then you would just log off when you log off you could leave feedback so you can give a little status of of whatever you wanted to say just like the other way and um, again it would just go to the SISOP and they would see I don't remember people using that all that often um, I do know there are some boards that had messages change and you could actually see it when you looked at the menu, the message would change and show who is doing it. So this would be my log off page. I thought this was pretty cool too. Uh, again, the same guy who made it, Roscoe Dog, made this one here too. And later much was kind of like my thanks or goodbye or whatever. I thought that was cool back in the <laughs> 80s. Anyway, it was it, it was a fun, interesting, you know, little video, uh, just just to see that time capsule of going back to the BBS. I love it. Great memories. I hope y'all enjoy it too. But that's the BBS, and now it just waits for the next caller. So I hope you enjoyed this video talking about BBSs and looking at this time capsule back in time, back into the late 80s, early 90s and seeing the BBSs and what all we did on them. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. And until next time, thank you for joining me on another Floppy Deep Dive.